Hello and welcome to Train Signal. You're watching vSphere Storage Appliance or VSA. In this lesson, I'll start off with an overview of the new vSphere 5 vSphere Storage Appliance. From there, I'll talk about what makes the VSA so unique before I move on to the different VSA cluster design options. You've got two options to choose from depending on how many physical ESXi servers you have. From there, I'll talk about the VSA SAN maintenance mode that you can put an individual volume or an entire VSA cluster into before I cover the VSA installation gotchas. So with that, let's get started. New with vSphere 5, VMware has announced something called the vSphere Storage Appliance, or the VSA. Now, commonly, VSAs are known as virtual storage appliance. They're really like virtual storage area networks, like if I ran OpenFiler as a virtual machine in vSphere, you would call that a VSA. Well, in this case, VSA stands for vSphere Storage Appliance. So, like I said, it's new with vSphere 5, and it allows you to create a storage area network, or a SAN, actually an NFS uh, really, it's an NFS NAS, but since it's a storage appliance, we'll just say it's a SAN. Um, and it's using the local storage that's on your ESXi servers. Now, originally in the slide, I had that you could use your local storage across your existing ESXi servers. But um, VSA has some very strict requirements in that uh, you can't have virtual machines that are running on your ESXi servers. Um, and especially vCenter cannot be a virtual machine running on one of those servers. And they have to be uh, very clean vanilla installs with uh, very little changes, if any changes, to the networking. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought, well, that's probably not your existing ESXi servers. So you may be able to migrate your virtual machines, say, to a fourth ESXi host in your infrastructure, and then uh, do this installation, and then maybe migrate the virtual machines back. Or, I mean, you could mig migrate the virtual machines back, but you would almost have to do brand new clean installs of ESXi. Anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, let me go back to introducing what VSA is. So this shared storage is required, of course, to implement many of VMware's core features like vMotion, VMHA, and DRS. So as you know, shared storage is really critical to using vSphere's advanced features. Many of these features um, VMware calls their core features, and uh, people expect to be able to use those when they implement vSphere, but you're not going to be able to use them without a shared storage device like a SAN or a NAS. So due to the cost barrier of a hardware-based SAN or NAS, many companies are unable to implement these important features simply because they can't afford to purchase that SAN or NAS. So the new VSA is going to allow all customers, let's hope, to affordably implement a SAN and thus implement these advanced vSphere features. So this is what the VSA looks like. This graphic from VMware.com um, depicts the VSA manager, which uh, actually runs on the vCenter server. You've got your vSphere client connected to it, and you'll actually have a plug-in for the vSphere client that you then use to manage this new virtual storage area network. The virtual storage area network, as you see the VSAs, actually span your vSphere servers or your ESXi servers, and they create a highly available and resilient uh, storage area network across the local storage on those physical servers. They present it as NFS and then you can store your virtual machines on it. This way, of course, you don't have to buy a separate hardware-based storage area network. And even if you did, that storage area network wouldn't be redundant. Now, would it? It would just be a single individual storage area network, um, especially if you compared it to the price tag, you know, that VMware's selling the VSA for. Speaking of that price tag, the VSA is not included with any version of vSphere. So it's a completely separate add-on that you purchase. And the cost details are $5,995 US per instance or per really VSA that could span either two or three nodes. So it's going to take all the local storage across those two or three nodes and create this virtual storage area network. You can also purchase the VSA by bundling it with vSphere Essentials Plus for $7,995 US. Uh, which VMware says uh, gives you a 40% off discount for buying that complete package. Now, I honestly hope that I have to come back and update this portion of the video very quickly because I really hope that that price goes down. I mean, this is software, and um, you know, VMware says that they're pricing it for SMBs, so I honestly I hope that they uh, lower the price on that significantly. That's just a little bit of opinion there. I don't work for VMware. And of course, your pricing may vary. You know, try to negotiate with VMware. Perhaps you could negotiate it down and get it for less. So consider the alternatives also. 
what makes VSA so beneficial before you dismiss it as being too expensive, like I initially did, is, hey, if you compare it to a low-end hardware-based SAN, say that you spent, you know, even 10 grand on a really nice um, hardware-based SAN, um, it's not going to be redundant. If that SAN fails, um, you're not going to have redundant storage. Your virtual infrastructure is down. Now, that SAN might have redundant power supplies, but it's not going to have uh, redundant storage controllers, perhaps redundant cache, all these things that you would find in, say, a $50,000 or $100,000 storage area network. But you're definitely not going to find in the sub $10,000 price tag. So according to VMware, you've got a CapEx savings by using the VSA. There's no hardware SAN to buy. And then you've got an OpEx savings because there's no dedicated SAN administrator or administration needed. You're able to administer the storage area network right from the vSphere client. You know, the existing VMware admin can administer this storage area network because it's that easy to do. It's just using the local storage across the ESXi servers. It's just some really super smart hardware. It's not a bunch of complex uh, hardware-based SAN equipment. Here's another nice graphic from VMware.com that depicts the things that make the VSA so unique. First off, they say that it installs in minutes. In fact, they claim that you can install it in five clicks. I'm not so sure about that, but we'll see. It offers high availability without the need for dedicated shared storage hardware. It can survive server failures, and it offers world-class data center capabilities, and it brings those down to the small environments. So they say it has set and forget automation, and you can get more out of the local storage that's on your hardware. And to me, one of the coolest things about the VSA is it's a software-based SAN from VMware that's fully supported for use with advanced vSphere features. So yeah, you could use a VSA uh, from one of these other companies and run it as a virtual machine, and those advanced features in vSphere may work, but they're not going to be fully supported. It's also fully redundant, like I said. It's easy to install, unlike many of the hardware-based SAN um, setups are, and it's bringing these highly available SAN features and advanced vSphere features down to everyone, down to the SMB level, let's hope, by making all of this affordable and enabling them to use these advanced vSphere features so they can really see how cool and how powerful vSphere is. And here's just a few more notes on the VSA. The VSA provides NFS-based storage. It's not iSCSI storage. It's NFS-based, and it presents that to the ESX servers. Each ESXi server has a special VSA virtual machine on it. So there's going to be a virtual machine on every ESXi server in the VSA cluster, and that's actually what's accessing the local disk and presenting it as NFS. There's going to be a one-to-one -one relationship between vCenter and the VSA. They must be on the same subnet, and you can't use vCenter to manage multiple VSAs. Each ESXi server should be a fresh vanilla configuration, as VMware says. And uh, a VSA SAN can either be two nodes plus vCenter or three nodes. And I've got some graphics here in just a second that depict that. vCenter must not be running as a virtual machine on the ESXi hosts in the cluster. This is unfortunate because most of us, um, if you're an SMB and you just have two or three servers, Likely you don't have another server just sitting around, you know, to run vCenter or, you know, you were hoping not to have to do that. But that's one of the requirements. And then multiple NICs are highly recommended for redundancy. To provide that highly available storage area network, you want to have uh, multiple NICs on each server. So this is what a two-node VSA cluster would look like. Um, you've got two physical servers, one on the left, one on the right. You've got ESXi on each server. You've got applications and virtual machines, and then you've got this VSA special virtual machine that is actually uh, using the local disk, and it's providing these volumes. Um, one VSA on the left-hand side has volume one, and that's replicated on uh, ESXi server number two. And then ESXi server number two has volume two, and that's replicated on, on uh, ESXi server number one. So you can see how there's this uh, essentially like RAID 1 mirroring here between the hosts. And then all of these are presented as uh, two VSA data stores. And then they're managed with the VSA manager that's running on the vCenter server and the VSA cluster service that's running on the vCenter server as well. So vCenter in this case is going to run both of those, the VSA manager and the cluster service. Whereas you'll see with three nodes, the cluster service isn't running on vCenter anymore. Let's take a look. This graphic shows a VSA cluster with three members, so three ESXi servers 
uh, across the bottom from left to right, one, two, and three. And as you can see, now there's three different volumes, and that gives us three different data stores. VSA Manager runs on the vCenter server, but the VSA cluster service isn't required, and that's because we have a three-node cluster. One of the features of VSA is called SAN Maintenance Mode. So I think of SAN Maintenance Mode being like uh, putting an ESXi host in maintenance mode where it can automatically evacuate off the virtual machines. Uh, with VSA SAN Maintenance Mode, you can put either an entire VSA cluster into maintenance mode or a single VSA node. So if a node is taken out of the cluster, think of that as a physical ESXi server, maybe you need to take it down for maintenance, uh, those change blocks are tracked until the node is added again. So it doesn't have to resynchronize all the data back to the node again. It can just uh, add back or synchronize the changed blocks. But if a new node is added to a cluster, then a full synchronization is done, which obviously could take some time depending on how much data you have. So again, that's one of the features of using VSA is this SAN maintenance mode. Moving on from SAN maintenance mode, let's talk about VSA installation gotchas. And while I love the idea of VSA, I have to tell you, to be honest, it still has a lot of installation gotchas that I wish that it didn't have. And I hope that over time, uh, many of these will go away and it will just get a lot easier to install VSA. But right now, the requirements to install VSA are quite particular. Uh, there cannot be any virtual machines on the two or three ESXi servers that will be part of your VSA cluster, and that includes vCenter. So vCenter, even if you're running it as a virtual machine, has to be somewhere else. You can have only one data store on each of the ESXi servers, and it must be a local disk. So you can't have any SAN connections on the servers. If you have SAN connections, VSA will tell you that, and you'll have to remove them before you can continue the installation. There's only a short list of physical servers that are actually supported by VMware, but it should still run on uh, many different types of physical servers that are supported by ESXi. But again, the list of supported servers by VMware is very short, so check the documentation for that. The ESXi servers must have the same hardware configuration as uh, VMware says. Now, I don't know if that means uh, they have to have the exact same CPU or it's the exact same physical model of server. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but that's what it says in the hardware requirements at this point. Once VSA is released and a lot of customers have had a chance to test it and try it and give feedback, I think we'll get a lot more information and details on this. And hopefully over time, uh, this list of hardware requirements will get much shorter. Also, you need to have six gigs of RAM minimum per server, and then you need to have a RAID controller that supports RAID 10 on each server. So uh, like I said, for an SMB, pretty strict list of hardware requirements here. So make sure that you check the VSA installation requirements prior to installation. So this is basically what the installation looks like. Uh, the general process is, first off, you would go to your vCenter server and you would install the VSA Manager, which is just a Windows installation, albeit a rather large Windows installation. It's about 770 uh, megabytes, the uh, actual installation file. So you install that and that will actually make the VSA plugin available. Then you can start up your vSphere client, connect to the vCenter server, and then you should see on the right hand side of your virtual data center a new tab that says VSA Manager. You won't see it on any of your ESXi servers, you'll just see it on the virtual data center. So scroll all the way to the right on the virtual data center tab and you'll see that VSA Manager uh, tab right there and uh, you will have to install Adobe Flash in order to view the actual installation screen here. Uh, but you'll do the whole installation from inside the vSphere client on this tab for the VSA Manager. So it'll walk you through the whole process. You'll select the virtual data center you want to create your VSA cluster in. You'll select the physical ESXi servers that you want to be part of the cluster. You'll select the disk format. It'll go through the installation process. It'll actually deploy uh, the VSA virtual appliances on your ESXi servers. It will add some new vSwitches on each of the ESXi servers uh, with some new uh, management networks and IP addresses that you'll specify uh, during the installation process. And then uh, once you've completed this installation, you'll have a new HA cluster, and that HA cluster will be using the NFS storage that's provided by the VSA virtual machines running on each of your ESXi servers. It's really very cool once you get it up and running, and I look forward to creating more training around the VSA because honestly, uh, it is so complex. There's uh, so many different things that you could do with it. I could foresee a few hours of training 
on uh, the new vSphere storage appliance. So that brings us to our summary for this lesson. We started off with an overview of what the new vSphere 5 storage appliance is and what it offers you. I talked about what makes it unique. It's a software-based solution that SMBs can use so that they don't have to purchase a hardware-based SAN. It's fully supported by VMware and it's also completely redundant. So if you lose one of your physical servers in the VSA cluster, uh, those virtual machines running in the VSA uh, cluster storage just keep on working. When that physical server comes back, VSA will rebuild it. You've got two different options to choose from for VSA cluster design. Uh, first off, you could have two servers with the VSA cluster service running on vCenter, or you could have three physical ESXi servers, and then you don't have to have the VSA cluster service installed on vCenter, but you still have to have VSA manager installed on vCenter in either case. VSA has a nice SAN maintenance mode where you can put an entire cluster or an individual volume offline. And then I covered the VSA installation gotchas. Make sure that your hardware is going to be compliant. You need at least four network interface cards on each physical ESXi servers. Pretty much they have to be brand new installs. You can't have any virtual machines running on the ESXi servers, not even vCenter. And you can't have any SAN storage attached to those ESXi servers. So in summary, the new vSphere 5 storage appliance, or VSA, is a very cool new offering from VMware that SMBs should consider before they go out and purchase a hardware-based SAN so that they can take advantage of vSphere's advanced features. Thanks for watching this lesson on the new vSphere storage appliance.